Hello friends and family. This is Sandra Brown of Happiness Past 60. I hope all of you had a lovely Easter. And if you didn't, it was just one day and it's over. You have lots of wonderful days ahead of you. Well, let's see, we just uh, talk a little bit about what Mr. Bill and I have been doing. We have been out of town. I didn't want to get on here and say we're going to be out of town because it's probably not a good idea beforehand uh, leaving your home like that. So that's why I didn't say anything. But uh, we just got back from Florida, St. Augustine, Florida. My sister lives there. My brother-in-law, so it's Debbie and Tim. Uh, my nephew and his wife Greta and their three children. I'll tell you a little bit about what went on. Had some not so good things happen, but God was with all of us. Okay. Let's see what been going on with us. Let's see. We had an estimate for uh, our deck getting stained. We had somebody come out for that. We haven't stained the deck since we moved here. Uh, and um, it was a year, November 1st, that we moved in here. And it does need it. Um, it's kind of a big job because you have all these big pots to take off of there. But I did purchase some of the little coaster things with rollers so that you can at least roll most of them to the stairway. So they can get them down easily. And the guys that do this are big, strong, and they're young. And this is a different time in my life that I'm having someone else do things. You know, when you're younger, you're just so used to doing everything yourself. But, you know, God's provided us enough money that we can pay somebody. And so it's just wonderful now. Um, what's something new I bought? Okay, so it's a crazy thing, right? All right. All right. We decided to have, I bought some country ribs. Mr. Bill usually buys ribs, but I don't know what they call them, just regular ribs. But it seems like there's just not much meat on those things. The country, they might taste better. They possibly do. But the country ribs are just all meat. And I don't like that. So we bought that. And he does like to cook in the air fryer. And his air fryer, I believe, is bigger than either one I had. So we had so many things alike that I had to get rid of when we got married. But we kept his. And um, I like when he does the ribs in the air fryer. He does a really good job. They're very tasty. But the thing is, the cleanup he hated. And... I'd seen the liners, but then my sister mentioned it to me again. And so I went ahead and bought them. Now his air fryer is big, so these are the bigger ones. I don't know how many are in here. 100, I suppose. And these, the ones I bought here are nine inch. This is nine inch, then has 1.77 inch, I guess. But. Anyways, we tried them last night, and they're disposable. Just put one in, and the cleanup was oh, much easier, especially when you have anything like barbecue sauce or something in there. So I'll put a link for that. What was the other thing I bought? Um, these are all Amazon things. The other is... Um, yellow sticky traps <laughs> well you know i've got all these tomato plants started and on one of the pots i was looking and i seen these gnats in there i'm like it also look good so i got these this peels off and it's a yellow butterfly and it comes with a little Shuffle. <laughs> so, 
you just loosen the soil, stick it on like it, and then push this in. Um, hold on to this part when you take the sticky stuff off, or the butterfly will stick to your fingers. But it, um, it's sticky on both sides, and it really works. The gnats just stick on there. They're attracted to that. I don't know if anybody else needs that, but you might if you're a gardener. Excuse me, got to get that in the ground. Um, some of you were making comments about the painting I did for Bill's cover, and I thank you for that. And I was, when I looked, uh, because of the editing program, all of my uh, video was this way, you know, horizontal. But when it, we took pictures that I had in my camera of the painting, it was vertical. And it, so it changed that and it cut off so much of the painting. So it's a, the it's an oil paint. It's dry enough now I can show it to you. Okay, a little closer. You can see the sky. Maybe if I come back a little, you can see the whole thing. And it's on a canvas. I don't know what size this is. Maybe 11 by 14? No, maybe bigger than that. I don't know. But we have to run this by the, um, I don't know if she'd be called an editor or whatever, but the wording, see, will be up here. And they survived. So. I just felt like I painted that too fast. And then when I paint something too fast, I think, oh, I could have done a better job than that. But then after I look at it later on, I kind of liked it. Okay, let's see what else we did. Oh yeah, when we was talking about those ribs, he made back to that. It was such a good meal and it wasn't hard because the ribs go in the air fryer and then I had um, those fresh pea pods you get and put those in the steamer. I, my steamer, um, I think it's a rice cooker, but it steams vegetables too. I'll put a link for that again. I think I had it before. And then I just take the potatoes and kind of scrub them up a little bit in the water and stick them in the microwave. Um, I don't even poke holes in them. It's just so easy that way. And then we put sour cream on it and I have some salt and pepper with garlic. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're starting to really like that on everything. So we had that on the potatoes too. And then I also have a, a thing, which I'll put another link on that uh, squeezer for lemons. You cut them in half and put them in there and squeeze them. And uh, I made fresh lemonade. That was such an easy meal. And uh, it was so good. All right, now back to our um, trip to Florida. My sister and uh, my brother-in-law invited us down for Easter. And our plans was to, you know, spend the night there, spend a few days, and uh, go to church, and go, we were going to eat, and then go visit my nephew, Robbie, and his wife, Greta, and their children. Well... You know, you never know in life, isn't it, the truth, what's going to happen. So before we went down, <clears throat> my brother-in-law, Tim, was helping, well, not helping, but he was building a tree house for his grandson, Easton. And he, he fell, but he kind of rolled the ladder down. And, um, but his back is bruised up, and he's been very sore <laughs> so prior to this he'd been walking five miles a day so mr bill was saying to me he goes i don't think i'm gonna golf when i go down there because he took a, a little fall was nothing big in the bedroom because <laughs> the skirt i bought to go around the bed he decided he's gonna help make the bed <laughs> and he was on 
Yeah, on my side of the bed, and he got his foot caught in that uh, skirt. And you know what? I've done the same thing, but I didn't fall, but I have got my foot kind of stuck in there. So be careful of that. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. So he was a little bit sore because he he fell in the bedroom on his right shoulder. <laughs> oh, gosh. So everything was all right. We got these two guys that are, Bill wasn't mad, but, but, but my brother-in-law, Tim, was really hurting. But we ended up the next day, he wanted to go. Uh, they wanted to take us to St. Augustine uh, downtown, and it was just beautiful. And we walked. We did a lot of walking, and uh, I'm just surprised that Tim was able to do it. And Mr. Bill's kind of gotten out of shape, you know, as far as walking, but he did really good. So <laughs> we, we did okay with that and had an enjoyable day, and the weather was beautiful. I'm kind of looking down here at my notes. Um, so while we, while we were there that same day, which was on a Friday, we came home and I think it was right before we got home, my sister got a message on her phone that my niece, great niece, my, my nephew's daughter, Isabella, she is a beautiful 17-year-old, petite girl, about 90-some pounds, but she's a weightlifter. And, I mean, she can lift over her head 139 pounds. <laughs> well, <clears throat> she was practicing for a competition, and she hurt herself. It was something, it just, I think, maybe just got a little out of control, the way it did. And if I get this right, one of the discs in her back was compressed and uh, they had to go in there and put some kind of cushing in and maybe some rods or pins. Another disc was chipped um, and I know her spine went out of place. I don't know if I got that all right, but <clears throat> she had to go in for a five-hour operation. And she's never had anything wrong with her. So because of that, then uh, Debbie and Tim, of course, went up to the hospital. And so we stayed that night, Friday night, I mean, yeah, Saturday. And um, Sunday morning, we got up early and we left her home because she had the other two children, there were, he has three children, and uh, a boy and a girl, and so Sophia and um, Easton, and she had them sleeping with her, with my sister Debbie at her house, and my brother-in-law Tim was on the sofa, and we were in the guest room, so we're like, oh, we need to get out of here and give them some room, and they don't need guests right now. So Sunday morning, Easter, we're on the road, but one thing, the weather was really good. And last, I've been in touch with Debbie about Isabella, and uh, she was, yes, in a lot of pain the second day. Had a, you have a lot of pain then. But uh, it looks like what they're saying, the recovery is going to take about 3 to 12 months. Uh, she will be wearing a back brace. One thing in her favor is she's young. Uh, she's uh, in very good shape. And we were praying, lots of people praying and, and lifting her up to the Lord. And thank God, you know, she could have been paralyzed. So we're just thanking the Lord for that because she will heal. Um, their prognosis was it may be she might lose a little rotation when turning. Maybe we'll see. How about that, you know? That might just not be so. But uh, I I think they, by now maybe they have got her up. They're gonna try getting her up and then uh, uh, fitting or, or putting a brace on her and working with that. You know, bless her heart. If you think about it, remember Isabella in prayer, please. 
All right, so all that happened because you never know, right? You just, you have to just roll with things and trust that God's going to be there to help us. Um, before, when we got home, one of the things that was really neat, we, you know how we feed the birds? And we have this log that we put a peanut butter mixture in the little holes drilled out. And yes, okay, I'll, I'll find one of those and put a, a link for those two. The woodpeckers absolutely love it. And the bluebirds love it. The titmouse love it. The, the goldfinches love it. It's, I really like it. Plus, it's not messy with a lot of seeds falling all over. But what we got the first time was a pelated woodpecker. Now, that's that woodpecker is so big. And that's the one that we hear out here in the glades out in the golf course. And I, I think when, you, when I was walking and you heard that hammering. Oh, my goodness. Well, that was the pelated woodpecker. And I, I think it takes the male and female about six weeks to uh, drill out and peck out with their beak a whole 12 inches round and deep. But so many other animals use that hole that they make and they only use dead trees. So the woodpeckers are not really hurting anything. And as they get older, their beak, I guess, wears down. So you can tell the younger ones, their beak is longer. Well, this guy that came to my, our feeder, I'm like, oh, that's a pie. It's so big. I think it's like 17 inches long. But look it up. That's what I did with Baker. And they're kind of uh, really bright red on their head, but it's really strange because they got like a skinny neck. <laughs> so, that was, so I was like, I go, Bill, Bill, come here, hurry up. And so we just stood there in amazement and watched him for a long time. So, yes, we just have all kind of woodpeckers here. We have the regular red-headed woodpecker. We have the downy woodpecker. And we have the flicker, which is, that's a beautiful bird. Uh, and, of course, the plated. I don't know if I missed one or not. Well, that's all I can think of. All right, we also had them deliver propane. We have propane that we use for our fireplace. What else? I don't know. Several things in the house. Yeah. Our, I think our, oh, wait. No, our, our stove is electric. <laughs> oh, our water heater, things like that. But, um, and our heat for the house. So we had 370 gallons of propane delivered. I did, I've never had propane until I moved here. Oh, by the way, we took Millie with us. We, we called to have her boarded at Bed and Biscuit, and they were full. They, you have to call two to three weeks ahead of time. I don't remember that, but when Debbie and Tim invited us, it was so close to Easter that I I uh, didn't have time to do that ahead of time. But she did wonderful. She did really good. She liked, We put her bed on the seat in the back, but she'll get in there once in a while, but she likes to ride under Mr. Bill's seat, her head under there, and on the floorboard. Because she always got sick before, when she was young, when I first got her. So I had to work with her and by putting her in the golf cart and taking her for little rides. Um, and then after that, real slow rides around the neighborhood with the window down. Now we can put the window up. But this is her... She just feels comfortable sleeping down there. And as soon as we come to a rest stop, she knows it. And she's very excited about that. And now my sister has a cat they call Meow Meow. Meow Meow. That's meow, meow Okay. And it's a black male cat. He's really big. They found him when they lived in Indy. They found him in a wood pile as a little kitten. And... He's been like an outdoor cat and stuff. And when they moved from Indy to Florida, that they, they were like questioning about, well, are they going to take him or not? And, and um, I knew they would because he's a nice cat. So 
Now he's become an indoor cat. And they have a fenced-in backyard that he can go in and out of. So that works out good. But, you know, Millie likes to chase cats. I don't think she'd ever hurt one, but she just, if they start running or something. But if they don't run, she's okay with them. But actually, Millie and Meow Meow became friends. I mean, we've seen them several times, nose to nose. And uh, it just worked out really good. She's very interested in cats, so I don't know what it is. She's mesmerized by them. So now we know we can take her. And oh, so in Florida, you know how you have those little dark lizards? Well, Debbie had them on her back porch, and we let it was nice. We didn't have to take Mila out on a leash because we just left the patio door open a little bit, and she could go from there onto her porch and into the Finston backyard. But she seen a lizard on the back porch and she was chasing it and the next thing I knew she had it in her mouth I'm like I can't watch this and so I just got out of there went in the kitchen was working on some stuff in there like and next thing I checked out the next thing the lizard was gone and I think she ate it because there was no dead lizard oh dear but she's a dog you know and it was uh, thrilling to her because she's a hunter, you know, and she doesn't get to do that. She's on a leash here. Ah, she didn't get secondly, so I'm glad about that. Well, let's see, what else can I tell you? Uh, okay, on the way home, the weather was great. We got home, and I had planted. Let me, all of you who know about tulip bulbs, I've never had trouble with tulip bulbs. But last fall, I planted some nice big red tulip bulbs and yellow tulip bulbs on my back deck in these big pots. I put them the right depth and everything. Do you know only three yellow tulip bulbs came up? Only three of them. I'm like, what in the world? And so then I was trying to read about it. It seems like they were saying that, you know, you need to water them, make sure they're watered. Well, that's all went out and we hooked the holes up and we watered them good before we left. And it rained. Then I read, you know, sometimes they rot in there. I'm like, okay, maybe they rotted. I don't know what happened. But we had a few left and I planted them in the front of the house. And they came up there. They weren't in pots. And they were those big uh, red ones. And they were, oh, they were so, I love those. They were just ready to bloom when we left. We came home and looked, the deer ate them. So, so I don't know. I don't know what's going on with everything, the bulbs. So let me know about, in, if you've had trouble with them in the pots. And then the weather here is not as cold as back home. And I think they need to have that cold. But the ones in the front came up, I'm confused. So I think the only way I'm going to know a little bit about what happened is if I dig down in those barrels. When I put the tomato plants in, I'm going to do that. I'm going to see what happened. I just don't know. But uh, please let me know if you know anything. Uh, the trees in the front of the house are blooming. I'm not sure what they are. So I'll take a little video of those and let me know if you know what those trees are. And one of the trees, the bark is like start to peel off. The other one isn't. So it's, it's something I think wrong with it. Let me go on to my next page real quick. I'm getting, this is getting long. Uh, I took a couple tomato plants to my sister Debbie, one of the mortgage left plants, and also one of the I guess the grape tomatoes, only these are the little bit bigger ones. I wanted to try those. Um, the geraniums that I dried out over winter and put them in bags in the garage. Yesterday, I decided to put them all in one big pot. So I put all fresh potting soil in there and put those in and watered them. I mean, those plants look so dead. I did see one that looked like there was a little light green in it. I don't know what's going to happen, but let's see. I hope they they come around. Hmm. Nothing ventured, nothing gained, I guess, so we're trying it. And now we have, the, going to the bluebird eggs, I had two. Now there's five 
eggs in there. So last year successfully two nests full, remember? So hopefully this year nothing gets in there and gets the eggs or cracks them or whatever. And another thing we had down there at my sister's Debbie's at the store, she bought some Calypso cookies. Have you ever heard of that? Those were so good. So then when I came home, I looked up the recipe and printed it out. Maybe I'll make those, okay? I'll do a cooking video and make some. But I'm trying to lose weight, and while I was down there, of course, I put some on, so I don't know. Like, when I make cookies, I gotta eat them, guys. All right, I'm going to. I'm going to read a scripture. One scripture before I go. And this is just a reminder for us. This is in Matthew chapter 7 in verse 1. It says, Do not judge, or you too will be judged. It's always scary, isn't it? For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. I don't want to scare you, but you know what? We've got to be careful, right? About judging other people. Because we don't know the whole story. Some things are very obvious. And um, yes, if something is wrong or sinful, we know it is, and we're not gonna call it good. But let's just be careful of judging others, okay guys? Let's just try to love. All right, I love all of you guys, I really do. I'm so glad I have you. And I actually, just miss talking to you. I like coming home and and uh, just talking to all my friends and family. And I'm finding out about some different people who've been watching me and I didn't know. Let's see, uh, Carrie, you're one, right? And Carol, I always have to say hello to you. And I know you're watching me with your cup of coffee. And you say I never answer, and I am. Now remember that. <laughs> And uh, Debbie, thank you in time for your hospitality. My sister just cooks up a storm when we're down there. Oh my goodness. That is her gifting, is uh, cooking for other people and making them feel welcome. Okay, God bless all of you. And uh, God loves you. Remember that. He really does love you. All right. Bye-bye, guys.